Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So I did this story a little bit, a little earlier in the day, and there's something that I missed on the story. Um, first, the strike wasn't going on four days at this point. The strike is now on day seven. When, or well, the article that I did for that story was, I think it was like a day or so in the past, but it's on day seven. Um, the second point is the strike has not ended, even though the governor came out and said, that we've come to some kind of agreement well the senate is not passing that agreement which means that the students are still out of school the teachers are still striking and for the most part they've still pressed on with their action um west virginia should be applauded for this and i'm not going to repeat the previous video because the things in the video still apply with the exception of this is day seven the strike is still going on and the deal hasn't necessarily been settled yet this is the New York Times. West Virginia teacher strike enters its seventh day. A statewide teacher strike in West Virginia entered its seventh day on Friday with teachers defying efforts by the state governors and unions leaders to end the walkout with a deal to raise pay. Earlier this week, James Justice, the governor, announced a plan to raise teacher salary by 5% and state union leaders and teachers will return to work on Thursday. But teachers across the state have refused, saying it will, they will not return until the state legislature completes the deal. And counties across the states have kept the stews close. Wearing red t-shirts, often emblazoned with the names of their counties, the teachers filled the chambers of the state senate on Friday morning and filled the hallways with rotundo in the Capitol chanting, We're not leaving! At this point, everybody's still prepared to be for the long haul, said Julie Alderman a first grade teacher in Logan County in the state's southern section who was waiting for a babysitter to arrive so she could head to the Charleston, the capital. We're starting to kind of say, wow, this really may last a while. The walkout began last Thursday after months of simmering tensions over myriad of issues, including a proposed change to teachers' health insurance plans that would have raised monthly premiums for many. Earlier this week, the Republican-controlled House overwhelmingly passed a pay raise a raise to teachers pay but the senate president mitch carmichael has expressed deep skepticism about the plan which was not on the agenda for consideration by the house by the state finance committee as of friday morning mr carmichael has suggested that any extra revenue will go towards shoring up the health the state's health insurance program rather than towards raises for teachers it's just your kids it's just your kids who cares now and I'm being mentally sarcastic. I'll be getting my tone. I'm making this point that they have an immensely important job. I mean, they're teaching your goddamn kids. I, I, I'm just amazed that this is, I think people put money in things that they care about. So you have some people who put their money in video games. Some people put their money in women. Some people put their money in drugs. What does this mean from the context of a state or from the context of a country? Well, you have all of this money invested in the military, but the teachers, the people who are teaching your kids have to fight for this, just the barest of scraps. And it is the barest of scraps that we're talking about. Let's look at West Virginia. Like I said, I'm not going to overly repeat the entirety of the last video. That video still applies with the exception of it being the strike still going on. Um, but taking a look at West Virginia's salary and why these guys are striking. This is CNN. When it comes to teacher salaries, West Virginia ranks 48th in the nation, according to the National Education Association. And it's one of the five states where teachers' wages actually went down between 2015 and 2016. That would explain why nearly 20,000 teachers and about 13,000 school service personnel are battling the state governments for better wages and higher pay. 48th in the nation. 48th in the nation. It feels like, and not just feels like, I would even make the case that to some degree, the case, it, it is this way. The country used West Virginia for the energy production state that it was, meaning thank you for the energy you're gonna power industry within the United States. You're gonna give us oil, you're gonna give us the things that we need from the standpoint of coal, not oil. Um, by the same token, when the country got tired of that energy source, when they started moving on to other energy sources, when they didn't necessarily want to deal with the environmental factors and the societal 
defects associated with using coal production. The country tried to move on. Now, it is sad to say that West Virginia, even after being this kind of breadbasket of energy for the United States, will be left as 48th in the nation. There is no reason why a state that produces energy, because look, there certainly there were people that got magnificently wealthy off the energy production in West Virginia for year after year after year, going back for decades. So it is sad to see that that money didn't necessarily go to the people of West Virginia. It ended up in the pockets of a very few people. And the people of West Virginia have to fight for the barest of scraps. They're just asking for a 5% raise. That's it. 5%. So the idea that they have to fight and bitch and moan and even leave their jobs for that. Mind you, rank 48th in the nation with regards to pay. So this is not people living high off the hog. This is people for the most part. Well, at the very least, based on their comparison with the other teachers in the United States, at the very bottom rung of the ladder. 5% is not a lot to ask for. So good job, West Virginia teachers. Hold the line. Good fucking job. You have all the support in the world. So in this rally, they're going to be students and they're going to be teachers also protesting because the community itself, the students themselves, have backed up the teachers in their plights. Good job, workers. Good job, workers. Fucking awesome. And uh, oh, there's something else on this before I, before I end this. One of the most interesting parts of this is this part in the New York Times article. A statewide teacher strike in West Virginia entered a seven day on Friday with teachers defying efforts by state governors and union leaders to end the walkout on a deal to raise pay. Now, the workers themselves have made the decision, we're not going anywhere, despite union leaders trying to pressure them to leave. That is amazing, that's amazing, that's amazing. The beautiful part about this is unions, whether you realize it or not unions, your, your leadership, the upper management, your capacity to lead is only insofar as people are willing to follow you. If you make poor decisions, and I'm not necessarily saying the deal that you guys made were poor decisions, but if you make poor decisions, the other people in that union will leave you behind. And what you're seeing is the other people in that union leaving their leadership behind saying, we're not going anywhere until the ink is signed on this. We don't necessarily believe, we don't believe you. We don't believe you. We need to see it. We want this to go through. Nothing is done until it's actually done. I respect the hell out of them for this. And I love this idea that these guys are asserting themselves and not necessarily purely relying on the leadership of the union itself. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think that's awesome. You're talking about workers themselves making the determination on whether or not they're going to either go in or they're going to stay out. And in this case, they want to see the ink dry before they make the determination to actually leave and all of this goes to naught. Good fucking job, West Virginia, and more power to you. This is not just for them. This is also for you. Their gains is, in real terms, your gains. So, good job, unions. Forster said the teachers union, or this particular union in West Virginia anyway. Good fucking work. Good fucking work. All right, guys, I will end it here. If you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you can always support through Patreon. Um, by the way, one last point with this. The reason why I make that point of making a distinction between the leadership versus the workers themselves has to do with the election. Some of this stuff, I looked through the context of the last 2016 election, where you had some unions that was pushing for this idea of Clinton over Sanders, even though between the two, it's not really a comparison in regards to who would represent the interests of labor more. Certainly, that answer is Bernie Sanders. That answer is easily Bernie Sanders. So the idea that the leadership will push the workers themselves into a disposition that is not necessarily in the best interest of the workers is somewhat problematic. So I don't necessarily blame the workers in this case for saying we're not going anywhere until the ink is signed. I don't care what deals you guys made. We're not going anywhere until the ink is signed. And if you notice, this was something that also took place during the election where union leadership tried to get people to vote for Democrats, Hillary Clinton, and you had a lot of people who defected and ended up voting for Donald Trump. 
your capacity to lead only goes so far as people are willing to follow. And if you're making certain choices that alienate the people who are following you, those people for a while are not going to end up following you. Meaning at some point, those people are going to stop following. And what you see right here is they're literally defying the union leadership in the same way that they did this during the election, meaning many people defying unions leadership. So whatever you want to say, whether you think this is good, bad, or somewhere in between, you can understand why they would do this if they didn't believe that that leadership was full on representing their interests, or at the very least, they didn't trust the deal that was made with that leadership. I don't want to say that they don't trust the leadership. That's too strong. I'm just making the point that this has nothing to do with the leadership itself. This has to do with making their lives materially better. And I don't blame them for wanting to make sure that this is done before they actually leave. Anybody can give lip service, put it in writing, put it in writing. So, all right, guys, y'all have a good one.